Hi there, my name is Emily and I'm CTO of Evidently AI. I'm happy to welcome you in this video and what I'm going to share with you today is how you can use Evidently from Jupyter Notebook. Of course, prior to using it, you need to install it and you can do it with help of pip install command. All the instructions are available in our uh, GitHub page. So I have already installed it and now I can just import it. Uh, and together with this, I'm going to import pandas, numpy. I'm not sure I'm actually going to use it, but <laughs> let's be here. And scikit-learn because I need data set module. So together with this, I import dashboard from evidently dashboard and I import a couple of tabs. It's data drift tab and numerical target drift tab. I will use it later on. So now we imported all needed libraries and we need to uh, load some data. Uh, I decided to go for a Boston dataset. It's a dataset that can be imported with help of load Boston function. So let's do it. And let's create a pandas data frame on top of this um, data. So we just call data frame from pandas. We pass data there. And uh, we also pass the column names because it will be much better to see actually column names. So let's see how it looks like. And it's pretty nice uh, pandas table. So now we have all the data for uh, creating dashboard, uh, at least data drift and target drift, and let's do this. For having a dashboard, we need to create a dashboard object, uh, and here we go. We just call dashboard, we imported it before, and we need to pass there our data. Uh, of course, for uh, making the data drift dashboard, we need to have reference data and current data. So for this purpose, I suggest us take our Boston data frame and just split it into two parts. So first part, it will contain first 200 rows will go as a reference and all the rest data go as a current data. And you need to choose uh, the type of uh, report you are going to build. And here I set data drift tab. So uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's run this command. Yeah, now we have our dashboard and we need to see it, we need to show it. And for doing this, we just run in a show function. So let's make it. Yeah, here is our data drift dashboard. Here we have some statistics. So uh, nine, nine out of our 13 features are drifting and that's all the details. So we have seen, we see the feature name, the distributions, uh, the results of statistical hypothesis testing and some p-value. So we can open each feature. You can see the distribution. You can see how the data looks like in time. So here it is. In many cases, we need to share our report with colleagues. And for doing this, we can call command save, put here pass, and uh, this command will create for you HTML file and you will be able to send it uh, over or just uh, open it at, and see it in browser. So let's run it and yes, our file is created. So I want to share with you one more thing. Um, it's target drift report. And for doing this, I actually need one more thing. And this is the column mapping because we need to somehow uh, tell to our tool that uh, one column is actually target, right? And for doing this, we just create in the Python dictionary. I call it column mapping and I'm saying that uh, the target is called target, surprisingly. Uh, and uh, I also split the numerical features and categorical, categorical features because uh, if tool knows that the features have specific type, it will use um, the suitable statistical test. So it's worth doing. And actually we are no need um, to these comments here, but in case you have predictions or you have a date time column, you can set it here as well. So yes, now we need to actually add target in our data frame. So let's do it here. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Now we just need to create our dashboard object again. So I'm again using dashboard. Here I pass uh, our reference and current data. Uh, I also pass the count mapping. And um, now in tabs, I choose uh, the list of two different tabs. It's data drift and numerical target drift. So if you need to have uh, several tabs in your dashboard, you can easily do it by listing them here. Now let's create our object. Oh, I actually forgot to run column mapping. Yeah, now we can create our object. It's created and let's again uh, run command show. 
it's loading and you have all the information. Uh, it's our data gist table and our target gist table. Yeah, so we can see that our target gist is detected. So distributions are different. You can see it pretty much visually and statistically by looking at p-value. So there is a correlation between target and other um, factors. And that's how our target values looks like. You also have here the table and you can see how your target um, looks like in terms of different features. For example, we can open something and see um, how target looked like in reference and current data in terms of features, right? So here we have feature radius. Uh, you can also import uh, this report as an HTML file. For doing this, use common save and put the pass uh, for your HTML file here, like I just do, did. So uh, thank you guys for watching. That was pretty much it. I hope now you see that it's extremely easy to start using evidently for making uh, interactive reports. I hope you will enjoy the video and tool. And if you like it, write something to us and put a star in our GitHub page. Thank you for your time. Bye.